One of the first things you'll notice when you have HardOps installed is the addition of a button at the top of the screen. Whenever you click on the button, it will bring out what's called the Hops button panel. And the first button is the About button. And we hover over it and we see that there's multiple things you can do with it. Just clicking it will display a list of the authors as well as the name and let you know if you have the current version enabled. Uh, below that are three of our main favorites of HardOps, which is Sharpen bevel and array which i'll be going into more in depth in addition to mirror below that are modifiers which are just a select list of some of our favorite modifiers in addition to the boolean operations you can perform when you have multi-mesh selection below that is shading shading is one of the main things that is the reason that hardups was born so shading is a theme that you'll see all throughout every panel that we show where you can adjust your shading, get your auto smooth just right, because sometimes a single digit of auto smooth can be the difference between a finely shaded model and having modeling artifacts everywhere. Below is smooth and flat shaded, which you can use to just toggle your shading mode. We always felt that this area was something that could be put together instead of in Blender, where you would actually shade your object through going to the shade smooth, but you would adjust your normals by going into a normal area, which we always found to be a little bit disjointed. So this area exists to kind of show our concept for dealing with normals and shading just in a small all-in-one all panel. When it comes to materials, you can add a series of blank materials, which we have videos that are focused on this topic of basically adding quick materials to your models in order to just save the amount of keystrokes that it comes with setting up base materials for things like bake jobs and exports and things like that. Material scroll is basically a more interactive version of that. And then we have blank light, which is a new addition that allows you to basically scroll through randomly generated light rigs where we slowly have been tinkering on the systems employed with it to make it generate better and better random lights. So the next panel that we have to that is the tool button, which this will bring you to your render settings. You can actually change your engine between Cycles, Workbench, and Eevee. However, at this time, we are currently the most focused on Eevee. We also have taken some steps towards making look dev and a little more interactive a process for people coming over from Marmoset. It might be more familiar to rotate your environment and shift through things like so while having a list to look at it on the side. But what you just saw there was the UI, which we'll be discussing later. And also because of all the extra environments I have, my list was a little bit longer than usual. We also have blank light here because we also consider it part of our rendering pipeline. So just by bringing it up, you can just begin scrolling through endless iterations of lights and press O in order to change your render type and look at it basically in render mode or look dev where you can actually see what the lights are doing. But at this time we will right click to cancel and go back to solid mode. When it comes to your viewport, we have basically consolidated the settings that you would normally be adjusting in the render area under screen space reflections and the resolution and you know your ambient occlusion settings and things like that into just two settings that we call EVLQ and EVHQ. And EVHQ is just a more high quality way to look at the viewport and these numbers below will let you configure the HQ settings depending on your computer. Perhaps your computer HQ settings aren't so optimal at 2048 on the shadow maps and would do better with 2048. So now we have jumped the resolution down to 20, 1024, which can be a little more optimal for people using laptops. But you might be on a laptop where you're like, hey, my, L my LQ should actually be at 512 because I have a beefier computer while you know I have a uh, dual 2080 setup here, so maybe I want to actually jump things up to 4096 because I really want to see Eevee choke. So we can do that just through this panel. When it comes to render settings, most of the render settings you would be dealing with in the render panel have been placed kind of in a nice little row so that when it comes to just dealing with your render and getting a nice viewport result, you can actually do that in a very straight line instead of having to go through everything that's over here. So continuing through our tour, in the event that you were dealing with baking of indirect lighting or cube maps, you also have settings here that you can quickly access to adjust your bake if you're just baking your scene. So the goal with this was to make a sort of render all in one area. And then if users are wanting to export, we also have optimized the export settings to at least choose to apply all modifiers and triangulate the mesh, ensuring that if you use our buttons to export, 
with your selected object, they will come into your engine the way that you at least see them in the Blender viewport properly. So the next thing we want to talk about is the modifier helper, which has also been integrated into the hops button, but this will get its own special segment that we'll be going over later. And then of course the opt-ins, which is something that I try to go over every video. The main things to keep in mind is that during the modals, you have the ability to make the end panel and the T panel leave, depending on your configuration. If you've modified your configuration too heavily or using a multi-monitor or multi-screen setup, there could be complications, of course. And then you can always opt in and opt out of certain levels of tools we are always working on different iterations of our tools so sometimes this can be jarring to users because we'll make certain changes to a tool as a prototype but we'll allow users to try to give us insight to what kind of changes and evolution it like to see with it and these can be interpreted sometimes as drastic changes but they are necessary for us to continue moving forward and try to provide the best out-of-box experience to future generations when it comes to the queue menu you can also have the queue menu show up in the form of a list which is the way it shows up right now where everything is stacked next to each other. But if you're using a very large monitor, you may also want them to show up similar to the way that they always have, where they show up as just a long list. You can go through and actually choose the option you want. And this can really depend on your preferences, but because sometimes I use Blender in a very small window for GIFs and online tweeting, I may want to see all the options on the same screenshot without it having to scroll down, which can take up additional time in a GIF, making the file larger. When it comes to blank material, you can have blank material either show up randomly, like you see here, or you can actually have it show up the same color as it shows up in the render in the viewport. However, right now it currently is only extended to material scroll. So if we turn that on and we were to material scroll, you can see that the material colors are rather bland versus if we have it off and we scroll through materials, we can see that they're rather colorful. So continuing on through this panel, when it comes to radial and twist, um, our current render bypass system requires that you do not have um, these on in render mode in order to cut them with box cutter or perform booleans without sorting mishaps. With this on, you can actually avoid that behavior and have things behave as you would expect. When it comes to setting up your viewport using LookDev, as I showed earlier, you also have the ability to make that your render scene, which eliminates the work completely of setting up and configuring your render. This is one of my favorite options. When it comes to blank light, they normally are pointed at an empty, but with this on, it will actually make them, with this off, it actually makes them not point at the empty, allowing you to freely rotate them. So continuing on, there's a KitOps panel here that would normally be populated with KitOps options. However, because it's not present, you could actually choose at this point to either get the KitOps free version and download the Hops Classic inserts, which should provide you a pretty nice insert out of box experience along with hard ops. When it comes to the key map area, this currently lists all the hotkeys available for hard ops and should provide users with a nice way of letting them know if they are missing a certain hotkey in their workflow or just certain things they want to try out and perhaps implement into their current workflow. So we have tried taking steps towards making sure that users can at least see all the hotkeys that are available within hard ops. And last but not least is the help button. Currently the help button is listing just the latest release log, a playlist to all the hard ops content, Ponte Riri's uh, YouTube channel, uh, operative link to Gleb's latest course, the manual to hard ops, and so forth. At the bottom of this are links to basically your marketplace of purchase. So if you ever were wanting to update the market or update your product, you could always just click one of these links and it will take you to the marketplace of your choosing where you can just simply update the product or download the latest update. If you have questions about this, this link will tell you how to update the product. But with that, that's the hops button in a nutshell.